I feel like this camera can show me a little bit more. I think I'm ready. Cool. I think I'm ready. I've been in the house way too long. Oh. Welcome. To the Side by Side, under the Believe Podcast Network. It is indeed a podcast about black science fiction and fantasy and staying on the same page as a what, Ben? Family. A family. Today for episode 111, we'll be discussing emotions and the comic run Far Sector, created by N.K. Jemison and Jamal Campbell. I'm just going to go grab that real quick. Ben, you stall for a minute? Uh, no need to stall because we're family. And family loves each other, unless you're one of those families who like kills everybody in the family, like one of the true crime families. Uh, because so they don't really, we don't want to be that kind of family. Let me tell you, here's the thing: for those of you who are possibly looking for a career in entertainment or, or this, comedy or serial killing, or serial killing, let me tell you a couple of rules to follow. Just, just yes and okay. If somebody's like, "Hey, you got my back for a minute." You don't say no need to have your back. It's just like, yeah, just 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 take the back and enhance the back. I have the Did back. You hear the first thing you said was like, no need to stall. And then you proceed to stall. You got this. This is real time. coaching. Stalling stalling sounds to me is like, well, what I'm gonna, it's like it's fake. it doesn't have to be that. It can be like, we're, we're glad to see y'all this week. You know, we're getting there. This show has been running for two years and we are still working on our hosting every single week. I love you, Ben. I love you too. Great. See, you see, you just yes anded me. All right. Anyway, we want to shout you. out some other people that really, really love us. And those people are our patrons. Remember, you can be a patron for $1, $2, $5 a month, baby. That is a special opportunity for you to join us in some behind the scenes content. And also join us for our Sunday yoga series that I have been teaching. And that is at 10 a.m. PST on Sundays. It's a 30 minute yoga class. Anyway, shout out to some special patrons Julia Cooper, Jenny, Penny O, Tahalia, Talia, sorry, Caitlin Mars. Marcico, Kayla Marcico, Amy, Stephanie Bender, and India Johnson. Thank you so much. We love y'all. We love y'all. Anyway, I'm going to yeah. kick it off to you, Vin. We're, We're going to be, be talking, talking about, about emotions. <laughs> so you know, when, now we're on the you, same page you, as a family. When you kick off something to somebody, that means that oh, I'm going to kick it off to you. You're right. You're and right. And then you don't say anything else. I got you. I missed okay. my cue there. So we're we're learning. You see how I took that feedback? We're learning. We're learning real time. Oh my gosh, you didn't pull that really good comment. Go, why don't you talk to people um, for a second about how you've been, so I can go pull that really fun comment uh, from Apple Podcasts. Go ahead. Uh, wait, no, no, don't don't read too many Apple Podcasts because then we'll run out of them. <laughs> I mean, it's just literally one more. You, okay. you found this one liner, and I was like, Ben, where's the, where's that good good? Where's that person that kind of shaded us? Yeah. Uh, anyway, how you been, babe? Okay. Um, we are, well, I was, I'm fine. I thought I was supposed, I thought you were kicking off to me to ask the question. You're asking, okay, how, kick it off. I'm, I'm, how have we, how have you been? We've talked about, I don't like asking. People, okay. Then how ask something else. Been? Just, just, just go with the flow. We're, we're, we're live. There is no Ish. flow except the flow that we make. All right. I'm just going to be stop talking. Why don't you talk to the people? No, I'm not talking to the people. I have a question for you, Amber. I can do two things at once. What's your question? I need your undivided attention. You have it. What's up? <laughs> I don't know why you're making it so difficult today. Like, we don't talk to each other every single day. Talk to the people. Okay. So and me. We are going to be talking about emotions. Yes. And <laughs> Amber, you are a, a very emotionful person. Go on. Yes. How do you control your emotions? Uh. Okay. Sometimes it, emotions are interesting because like, I'll think of how I control my emotions just like when I'm just sitting with myself and then sometimes how I control my emotions when like we're not having the best energy, right? Uh, so one thing that really helps me is I like to think about my emotions as something that needs to be like reset and recalibrated. Like right now I'm having a moment where I'm like, oh, we should kind of like, I'm, I'm not going to say like this is a formal reset, but I'll do something like, you know what? I don't know. Maybe Ben and I were just a little nervous coming onto the set because we're like the minute this baby goes down to sleep yeah, we're we like, gotta hop we on the air time. so then we like rush into things and that's okay so sometimes it just takes a moment to be like I'm gonna acknowledge that I was rushing and my emotions might have got the best of me here um 
and so hopefully sometimes that is my way of like recalibrating the situation. But Ben, you know how I am. I'll I'll say like I feel myself getting escalated. I feel myself getting she heated for the following reason. I give so many freaking warnings. Do I not? You do. Yep. And sometimes you take those warnings and fuck with me, or sometimes you say like, I I see why you're getting frustrated. Let me give you a minute to like de-escalate. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I think I do that recalibration for myself as well. Like I'll see an email and say to myself, like, all right, I'll, all right. Like I'm, I'm having a little bit of anxiety this week because uh, real tea, if you're ever an influencer or like a self-employed or an independent contractor, sorry, I got to put my leg on your uh, lap of any kind, you just get anxiety because nobody ever pays for things on time and and i'm not please don't feel sorry for me or try to send me money it's not even that it's just like i'll do a job for somebody and they're supposed to pay in 30 days and it comes on day 45 or it comes on day 40 and i'm just kind of so tired of this and my agents are just like but that's just how the business goes but and i'm just like well that's not how the bills go girl (laughs) girly yeah you have the bills are always paid you can't be 15 minutes late on your bills so that's but again owning your own business you need like a significant amount of cushion like ultimately it's the best way to to you know i think the best way to live life is to work for yourself you don't have to work for anybody else yes but you do need a cushion because your income is not as consistent so you have to be smart about it ultimately down the road it is better yeah. But, uh, and like I said, I want to be mindful. I'm, I'm not complaining to people like, bitch, you work for you. You get to work on your own schedule. But if you, I, hopefully you can relate if you've ever been paid late for a job. Well, like that, that was my uh, through line there. So you, yeah. So the way you regulate your emotion yes. is that's something that has made you pretty emotionful. Yes. So. Because I used to just operate and get mad and get sad. And then like, you know, when I started dating you, I can't just like you brought that attention to me. You're like, sometimes we're having a good day and then you just switch. And mm-hmm. sometimes we're having a great day and then you just get quiet. So what I'm trying to do is do a better job of like, let me mark the switch with words. Like, <laughs> let me say, I'm about to give you the silent treatment because I'm upset about the following. So, And I feel like that softens the blow. How do you regulate your emotions? Uh, t- mostly just cracking jokes for... <laughs> Yeah, I crack jokes or I try to give myself context. So if something is happening, like, or for example, you know, not being paid on time, I'm like, well, we are making money. Like some people are not making money. So you start, I sort of talk myself out of it. Yeah. You know, or like, uh, and then an example of giving a joke yesterday, I made this crazily delicious cod um, pot- oh my potatoes. Gosh. Oh, no. <laughs> And I made them and uh, I just, you know, I put a decent amount of effort into it, really seasoning did. and mm. planning and the potatoes really good. And it's like you layer the potatoes out and then you put the cod on top after you season the cod with like salt, pepper, thyme, lemon, garlic, and garlic, all this. It was really good. And then you bake it. So you bake the potatoes, take the potatoes out half baked, then you bake the cod on top of the potatoes and the cod juice sort of seeps into the potatoes. It's really good. And I get it out and I give Amber and, you know, sunset is at 445. So I make it early and I go out on my run and I'm enjoying my run. It's really nice. I'm seeing the sun setting and I'm like, you know what? You know, Amber will have eaten when we get back and I'll eat something. Maybe we could walk out and do a little walk around the reservoir. (laughs) And I come in and Amber is just looking pissed the fuck off so angry she she has not a hint of a smile usually you always have a hint of a smile right now you have a hint of a smile amber just lives in pretty much a constant state of hinting at a smile or so always on the corner or of her lips and she just <laughs> her eyes have just turned into this dead glazed look like a gla- freshly glazed salmon just nothing is coming out of them and she's she, you know, Amber does, this, you know, it's like a, uh, yeah, okay, what is that what dragon happened. breath, the dragon breath on yoga. <laughs> so I walk in and she says, Gucci ate the rest of your meal. And I was like, wait, what? Uh, and it was a lot of cod I, and I a lot of potatoes. And I it went was to a change, full big plate. <laughs> I went to change the kid's diaper for two seconds. Like I had my eye on it the whole time. Gucci had had his dinner. Gucci had been Gucci walked. had his eye on it the whole and time too, I, I guess. I went upstairs to change her diaper and I came back down and it was gone. And so my initial thought, because I knew I had fed Gucci and it was high up on the counter. Yeah. So my initial thought was, oh my God, someone broke into our <laughs> oh, home. That's terrifying. And ate 
Ben's dinner. Like, who is in my house right now? And then I got closer to the bowl and I was like, oh no, this is like a clean Lick. platter and then some lemon pieces on the floor, like like a f- fucked up Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> and Did I she- just, I felt so guilty yeah, felt- because you spent so much time. Uh, no, we we're not talking to you today, Gucci. I'm just kidding. I, I just felt so horrible because you spent a lot of time and effort making that meal, and then you were like, "I'm gonna eat it as soon as I get back." And so the minute you walked in, I was like, "Please let me order you something yeah. to go." Please, please, please. Yeah. I'm so I'm so I, and sorry. And I was cracking jokes about you know. Yeah, you do crack jokes. About, and I and I was like, it's okay. Like at least someone got at least someone got to enjoy it. At least now, Ben, some sort of sentient being got to enjoy it. You ben, know? you know. Now, sometimes you crack jokes, but sometimes you kind of have little temper tantrums. Yeah. Like, you're not going to tell the people about your temper tantrum so this morning? So, I threw a temper. <laughs> <laughs> I also started laughing after I threw my temper tantrum. You did, but when you're, th- when you're throwing like, your ah, tantrum. Like, I made, like, a perfect omelet today, and, and it, dropped. <laughs> it dropped as I was taking out the- Oh, it dropped. Yeah, the croissants. Yeah, I didn't drop it. No, I was taking out the croissants, and- uh, from the oven, I was making bacon and a perfect omelet that I'd flipped just right. He did. Got, he did. It looked so pretty. It was like given restaurant brunch style, you know, not like high class, more of like a decent brunch that you would go and you have, you know, unlimited mimosas, that right. kind of brunch. Anyway, I take it out and I accidentally hit the handle and it f- like flips out and falls on the floor and I was like ah and I have, have the spatula I'm like hitting the spatula I'm like ah. yeah yeah he's having like a a physical I'm like, kids ah. tantrum and me and Wilder are just like you good but I'm also laughing at the same time because yeah. it is funny. I mean you're not like breaking pots and pans you're just like hitting like getting a little bit of anger out I was like ah. but sometimes I'm like all right now I'm gonna give you, I woke up I'm gonna early give you one more minute everything. to have your fit but that's okay we all I woke up early to do it too so we all have our emotional moments it's fine uh, yeah. Well, you know, I was thinking about this phrase, get on my nerves. Cause sometimes you say that like Ben, you getting on my nerves now. Yes. Yeah. Ben, yes. Ben, that that's one way I, I give you a warning. Sometimes, sometimes I think your nerves are this separate entity of you and they're they like, are. Sing, like almost like a Medusa tentacles or something. And they're sticking out. That, and then, that's how then there's like work. little, there's like little bends of me that I'm splurting out. They're like popping out. And then I'm jumping on yeah, your nerves. Yeah, and you're just like, and I'm, and I'm jumping and I'm like, on your nerves. You're like a gnat. I'm so just I, like, well, yeah. Sometimes nerves are this almost. They almost act as this separate entity of ourselves. Yeah. So, the the book we're reading today, Far Sector by N.K. Jemison. That's and, right. Uh, uh, Jamal Kempel deals with emotions and what it would be like in a society without emotions. It's also really interesting because a lot of the way that we learn how to behave, obviously, is from our parents. And so essentially, when you bring two households together, you just bring like years of parents and grandparents and who the fuck ever like influencing a kid on like, like I want always, obviously we're raising a kid together now and I want her, like she's going to learn how humans behave yeah. from us. So if you ever see her like throwing a little physical tantrum, which is going to happen or yeah. I just, I just Where want she her. learn it from? I need to like, right. learn to regulate. Yeah. Emotion. we Yeah. Th- like, and not like, I just, I, I do want to teach her like it is okay to have feelings. Feelings are a part of what makes us human, but at what point do we let those feelings like get the best of us or, or sometimes I really have to zoom out. Like I, I have to, you know me, I'm always yeah. like, Ooh, Amber zoom out. Like you really are like a good person and you're working really hard. And just because this paycheck hasn't come, doesn't mean that you're not a good provider for your family. No, you're not. Uh, but it, it feels that way. that way when, when things drop the ball, you're always like, well, what else could I have done? Yeah. So, Sometimes people sort of go this other direction. They're like, okay, emotions. From their parents? No, just emotions. So okay. you're like, this. I have this terrible emotion, so let's get rid of all emotion, Yeah. right? And this book sort of deals with that, the yeah. tyranny of getting rid of all emotions. But I was thinking about when it, when is it okay to be tyrannical, right? For example, with a kid, sometimes you have to be tyrannical. Like a kid doesn't want to go to a dentist. <laughs> Sometimes you don't want to go to the dentist. No, I had a full meltdown at the dentist <laughs> yesterday, to be honest. And so you force a kid to get into the dentist chair. So I was thinking about this question, when is it okay to be tyrannical? Like forcing someone to do something for their own benefit. Uh, I think it's okay to 
be tyrannical if well, it's interesting because like teeth teeth health is like like we know this is what's best for you but some some other things might be like well this is what we feel is best for you based yeah. on like our religious principles our philosophies for life um i think it's okay to be tyrannical when it comes to like a very clear and present physical health issue physical but yeah. it's it's also okay to say like you know this dentist made me feel uncomfortable because they didn't talk me through each of the things they were doing mm. this obgyn didn't say like now you're about to feel a little bit of cold pressure. Now you like that stuff is very important to me. And I definitely had a moment yesterday at the dentist where there, I was like, Oh, you're just going in there. Oh, my whole jaw is numb. Like why? I, I know I was coming I in some updates. Yeah. I know I was coming in for this specific thing and I know you to you, this is a routine procedure, but to me it's not. So I, I do need a little bit of coddling when it comes to physical pain and things like that. So, it's okay to be tyrannical if it involves some sort of physical ailment. Yeah, like an actual ailment. Which what, what if that person might, doesn't want that treatment, though, right? I think, I think it's easy to persuade a kid. Like, hey, like, do you? This is what happens to your teeth if you don't take care of your teeth. Yeah. This is what happens to your bones if you don't take care of your bones. Sometimes, what is um, interesting to me is, and this might be like. Well, parents can do what they want with kids. And I get that. But this is just like, if you ask me, sometimes I see kids in pain for things that are like just vanity. Like a kid like screaming, getting their ears pierced. And I'm just like, well. It's, Was this worth it? Yeah. To get the ears I, pierced. I don't, right. And which I, I know tons of people all the time are like, why aren't you getting wild ears pierced? Because I'm like, because when she's a teenager, I'm just going to let her go and say like, is this something you want? Yes or no? It's like, I don't know. Because at the end of the day, like a girl needing to get her ear pierced is kind of wrapped in like gender roles and vanity. And I'm not judging you if you did that to your kid. My mom pierced my kid, my ears as a young girl. But, or when I see like a child, like screaming through getting their hair braided, sometimes I'm kind of just like, it's not worth it. Is this really worth it? Like, and I get it. It's, uh, I, I was a child who I, I wasn't very tender headed. You know what tender headed means? Yeah. Yeah. You taught me. What does it mean? It means that the roots on your hair are tender. <laughs> so when you get brushed, you're like, ah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's great. So I wasn't tenderheaded as a kid, but my sister kind of really was. And just like, sometimes I'm like, there has to be another solution of what we can do to her hair than just like forcing her through this pain. Like she's screaming, she's being held down. And what is all this for? A cute picture? Like there must yeah. be a style where this pain is totally unnecessary um so the, it, it is those things where i decide like just just give them a natural style because to be a young black girl millennial age is to mean like a a lot of potential traumatic experiences happen to you as a young child but now there's we're we're seeing thankfully like people embracing their natural hair textures more but as kids most of us just all got perms yeah and, and they were painful. So it was just kind of like, why are we like screaming our heads off to make our hair like different from how it grows out of our head? Was like it, this isn't necessary. But I feel like it's not unique to now. I feel like there were there are moments where, you know, the black power movement, pe yes. you know, parents in the black power movement were not forcing their kids to have like these natural. For sure. Uh, but something know. happened in the 90s where, and I'm sure there's a, a dissertation on this, where like a lot of uh, chemical relaxers oh, were just marketed to black children and black families. I think there was and a And so we all like every two to three weeks, sound off if this is your story as well as a little black girl, but we all every two to three weeks were just getting perms and they, and hot combs to the head to look like- yeah presentable and respectable and like we took care of our bodies and those are the times where i'm just like this is not like i, I mean obviously I don't, I don't have deep trauma for this and at, at some point i you know I, I bleach my hair pretty regularly now too but those are the times going back to your question where it's not okay to be as mm -hmm. tyrannical i'm just like just i don't know anyway yeah, let's read some uh, reviews, some podcast reviews. Yes, we have two fun reviews to read. Do you want to read the first one? Uh, I, I added that yeah, second you read, review. Read, read both of them. Read yeah. both of them? Okay, so this one's from Be More Black. Love your name, obviously. Found y'all on IG. 
came to hear the show and I love it. Signed, a new pod fan. At my faves, call me GG. At my faves, call me GG. We love you. Thank you so much for leaving a review. Y'all, that review was one sentence long. So please leave even just a one sentence review, a one word review. These do mean a lot to us. Now, this one is very interesting, but I do, I do appreciate that this person left a review. Okay, this review is from Kiki at 1977. Kiki at 1977 writes, I first encountered Amber and Ben on TikTok. Amber's hilarious and Ben's her biggest fan. However, I'm a groupie. You're a groupie. However, when I began listening to the podcast, their banter rubbed me the wrong way. I felt like Amber was really mean and disrespectful to her husband. It was difficult to listen to. But I love the topics, and Ben's fashion for sci-fi has piqued my own interest as well. So I continue to listen. I don't know if y'all have been in therapy or I've just gotten used to how y'all communicate, but their exchanges have grown on me, and it's evident that Amber adores Ben. I love listening to you weekly and have purchased books based off of your reviews. Keep up the good work. <laughs> what, what is your initial response to that, Ben? My initial response is that uh, you you have learned to be a little bit less uh uh disrespectful or like interrupting you've learned to not interrupt because we would listen back and amber would be like wow i do interrupt ben a lot there so you you've had to learn because you are high energy you are the comedian you are the high energy one and i think this podcast has helped us to be a little bit more like pause listen respond instead of thinking of our response before we're done listening Right. I, you know, here's the thing about it. Two things can be true at once. Two things can be true at once. One. Okay. Well, maybe three things can be true at once. <laughs> One, we always be in therapy and I, I never want to frame therapy as like, y'all need to go to therapy. I don't know. Like we went to premarital therapy. We've gone to therapy just for prevention. We've gone to therapy for like, Hey, we're going to be new parents. We want to get some therapy. So are they wrong in saying that maybe, I don't know if y'all been to therapy or not. They're not wrong, but it just, it, 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 it felt like a read. It felt like kind of a dig. It's like, I don't know what's going on with you two. Y'all need some therapy, but that's fine. Uh, the second thing is we both, the, the nature of a podcast lends itself to learning how to communicate better. Sure. Right. And so I will give them that. This is the third thing for me. And this is not a direct dig at this person because I do appreciate that they gave us a review. And a five-star review. A five-star they, they five review of that. And they people. said they're here to stay. Yeah. What is interests me, this is a larger conversation. I think we, it is, I think sometimes based on like race and gender, yeah. this is a common critique of me. Yeah. And I question if I was dating a black man would so many people be like you're disrespectful you're da 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 but i think something about you being white just gives this natural persona of like well he's helpless and she's mm. aggressive and she's this like whereas when i like hang out and shoot the shit with my brother and call him a fuck face people would never bat an eye at you that. you would never but you would never call your brother a fuck face to his face what, yeah what, I'm what like, would you you're actually being a, say you're being, like, you're being you're being a like dick. stop acting like a dumbass like yeah, we, yeah, we would, would talk to each like other that. like that you would say it but like if that, i did yeah. that to you i am mean i yeah, am disrespectful and and we are friends also and we are lovers and and i'm not saying i've never been disrespectful or mean to you not, not, not that but in the times that you've been mean to me nobody would ever say like oh my god like this man is being so mean to his wife but mm -hmm. there's something about this trope of like she's a bitch wife she's an yeah. aggressive black girl that that I will never stop getting by yeah. by nature of being with you. Yeah, that's always something that sits in the back of your mind. Like you have to be like, am I authentically being disrespectful or am I just playing around? Right. Yeah. Which, which is a question I really don't have to ask myself because I'm always being disrespectful. And you also see that's the one. The two. You also see both sides of me. You also see like for every time that Amber has yelled Ben loudly, yeah. she's like cuddled and kissed and surprised yeah. more, and, more obvious. and rubbed her face in my balls. So, so yeah. you get to see all that that people don't. And um, but that once again, I'm not trying to comfort this person, but I do get a lot of like, 
Look at that wife being so disrespectful yes. to her husband. And I think it's, a lot of that is rooted in patriarchy. I, I think when a I th lot of that's the initial thought that a lot of people see, but this but person when you sounds zoom like out, a long or, but also is a long time listener. That so part, they might get that like part. more context correct, to, to correct. how we interact. And yes. I think there are times where like you have made a joke and that joke has gone viral on on a platform and the people are like wow this is so Look at terrible her bullying her his yeah, or, her uh, his or wife <laughs> this is an inappropriate joke or whatever right. and then and they're Whereas like oh. if you said if you if you look on paper and saw Wow, here is a couple. If you opened up a pamphlet, a pamphlet, and you said, "Wow, look at this couple. One person in this couple relationship is a comedian who uh, works hard to create content, who edits things, who drives the boat, and one person is it, what is that supportive partner who also helps with all this content, but like one of these people is sort of like leading the creative stuff." Yeah. And if and the person who's leading the creative stuff makes some executive moves every now and yeah. then. But if you said and the person that makes the executive move is a woman, then it's like, well, she's probably just a bitch. And you're just like, no, she's mm. <laughs> then. Yeah, that, she's making that necessary moves the, so that uh, the, the couple can, so that the unit can prosper. But that's tangential because at the end of the day, I am always grateful for Apple podcast reviews. We have yes. been to therapy. We have learn to speak to each other with more love and care. And I've learned that the internet appreciates uh, the cheesy loving moments of us too. So Absolutely. A, a critique for me is like, I can do a better job of showing some more loving moments. Would you agree? You're like, Bitch, fuck this. we want to just get into the book. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I do want to get into the book. Let's right. get into, Let's get into the, book. Let's get into the, book. the book. All right. So we read far sector by N.K. Jemison. The artwork is by Jamal Campbell. Absolutely fantastic. Y'all should buy it. It's Correct. a self-contained story. It's part of the Young Animals series, which is being curated by Gerard Way. And for those who don't know, essentially comic books can be super overwhelming. And there's so, so many different kinds of comic books. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult to start reading a series when you have to read, you know, 60 years worth of story. Correct. So yes. Young Animal is sort of the attempt of DC. Um, DC has sort of two projects called uh, Young Animal and then DC, um, I think it's like DC Black or something, where you create these self-contained stories. So you don't have to read all the context. So I think like DC Black Label is essentially stories that occur outside of the official canon of the DC universe. Mm -hmm. And Young Animal series are stories that take place so outside of uh, the realm of the canon that they, you know, creators are allowed to do their own thing. Got it. M makes sense. I like that because Perfect. it can be very intimidating to start. It's like if you're like, hey, I want to start reading comics. Read and then people and are like, well, you can't just start. You got to start with this, 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 these yeah. classics. Oh, yeah, and you got to oh, transfer to these writers and comics. And you're just like, well, forget it. Yeah. Sort of like watching the Rings of Power. You have to watch all the other three movies and it would be helpful of the you know of the Lord of the Rings, it would be helpful to watch the three Hobbit movies to understand the Rings of Power, and that's like ten hours of television. Where something like Far Sector, you could just read it on its own. It's a Green Lantern mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know anything about Green Lantern? I know that there was a really bad Ryan Reynolds movie with Green Lantern, but that is it. I've never seen it. Do you so know? So I can't say that it's. We talked shit about this last week, but I cannot confirm that it's bad. I guess, but do you know? Uh, what, you know what? It. Deadpool did to that movie. No. So he went back in time. He got a time travel and shot Ryan Reynolds, so he would never have to take that role. Oh, that's funny. Or I think I think I like or like that. he yeah he was like Green Lantern him. supposed to be a black man at one point. Uh, there, so oh yes, so that is a great Green Lantern is a group of basically like international um, or cosmic peacekeepers, I should say. So cosmic there, peacekeepers. So okay. there are many different Green Lanterns. <laughs> so there is a black Green Lantern. Gotcha. There is a white, and they're all, they have different names and different backstories, etc. And Green Lantern is DC. Green Lantern is DC. Correct. Okay. So yeah, and I think Deadpool 2, Deadpool gets, um, and Deadpool is played by Ryan Reynolds. Got it. And he's known for breaking the fourth wall, but he goes back in time, like shoots Ryan Reynolds. That's so funny. So he doesn't have I love to that. take that. Uh, anyway, so yeah, but Green Lanterns, they have these rings and it allows them to conjure anything their imagination um, can think of. 
And right. the only limit is their own imagination and then the sort of power source of the ring. That's sort of like, that's really the only thing you really need to know about the Green Lanterns. And they're sort of hired by these like blue people who are these like cosmic masters of the universe or whatever. Okay. And, and they're sent to different places to help people. They're just so like, a ring that can do anything your imagination conjures. Got it. Right. So for example, something that I like, thinking about is if I had a green lantern ring like what would I do with it and I was thinking like I would imagine like a new instrument that would be like a cross between a violin and a lawnmower because I like lawnmower sounds because they're so like aggressive and like and then the violin has such a high pitch that you create this new instrument and then you could put it in like a metal melodic metal sound what would you imagine with your green lantern ring (laughs) I would like a ring that would freeze time or not so much freeze time, but help me move. What's that one character from like days of futures past who can like, he goes so quickly, but to the audience, it's like sweet dream. Like he can, he can sort of slow things down. Like clock stopper. The guy who played Dahmer. Yes. What's his name? Evan Peters. Yes. Uh, I, I would love something that does that because I just feel every day like I'm running out of time like I mm. wake up and then I like sneeze and it's nighttime or you sneeze and, we, and your baby's seven month seven months I old. know and so I which I would never like want to stunt her growth or anything but some <laughs> days I'm just like wow I have not read my kid a story yeah. in like three days or I remember like last week you went to story time and I know I joked about how bad the librarian was but I was kind of really sad at one moment that I was like taking a meeting so I couldn't go and so those are the times where I'm like, ooh, if I just froze time a little bit, I could take the meeting and do the laundry and go to story time. So something time related. I, I just feel like I'm running out of time. Mm. Why do you write like you're running out of time? Oh, you know what would be? I, I don't know if the Green Lantern, uh, the the ring, that ring of power can actually freeze time or do something with like the time continuum. I think you can imagine something outside of you. Got it. But it's not well, like in this story all... she was able to travel because of the yeah, ring, right? She, she's able travel to travel different times lines or something. No, 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 no. So at one point she's able to imagine herself into a computer. Like okay. She pushes herself into a computer. Got it. So that sort of which I thought was like a cool use of the ring. Yeah, but, but we did jump around timelines. Uh just, just to, to have show, background. Just to, okay. to have like background okay. and understand how she got there. So yeah. It was me... unclear to me if when that was like the use of the ring versus like just a story <laughs> which which by the way i was comics themselves are sort of this non-linear storytelling i've, I've been reading this yeah. book by rebecca wazo called um uh the character the character of ourselves and oh, it's is about, that that scary yeah it's oh. it's, it's about uh scary black comic cover. creators and how they engage in um you know personhood within comics so in, in american yeah. comics so of course uh so but uh, but reading a reading a comic, you're given all the images at once. So you might be reading, but you're also looking back. So your mm-hmm. your mind is getting all of the story at once on, yes. on each page, which is sort of a nonlinear storytelling. Anyway, this story is about uh, Sojourner Joe Mullion, who is sent. She is a lantern. She is recruited to become a lantern. Yes, and she is sent to the farthest realm of like the universe called the Far Sector. Um, I think it's like the city of the Endi- of the enduring. I think mm-hmm. is the name of city it. City enduring. Mm-hmm. City enduring. And she's sent there to help solve a murder in a society that hasn't seen a murder in 500 years. And this murderless society is the result of the leaders deciding to get rid of all emotions through this virus that sort of infects your brain. Yes. Yeah, so they don't walk around like zombies. No. They just don't have like intense emotional feelings. Yes. They don't. They, all decisions are made based on logic. Yes. Uh, yeah. So a couple of like cool world building things I wanted to talk to you about is this idea of currency. Yes. So sorry, I keep saying yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Memes are used as currency in this world, Mm -hmm. which I thought was like very clever. And there's this uh, civilization called the at at they're just sentient AI and they use memes, which I thought like is creative because you like memes. Imagine if like you got to pay for your groceries with all the memes you send me. Amber sends me memes. I do, and I hate when you're like, mm, yeah, meh. I I liked that that was the form of currency. There were definitely times where I'm like, I mean, it's supposed to be. It's 
lighthearted and fun. But I think it's those moments that make me feel like, oh, well, comics are supposed to be more lighthearted and more childlike. But there were some theme and you can like, you know, drag me. There were some themes that, juxtaposed. That was very offensive, but I know we'll, it was. We'll I know, that. but that but as I'm working to break the stereotype that that comics are just for kids, memes being used as currency was uh, interesting. like was like, oh, it's just lighthearted. So 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 let me say this. It it was hard in moments because the memes were juxtaposed with some pretty heavy themes. So at one like part, murder. murder and slavery. So like at some point there are, you know, people who have been trafficked and, and now turn be, become slave, the people who have been enslaved. And instead of, you know, doing uh, like working fields or, you know, tending to crops or whatever, these slaves are making memes. So there's a level of uh, the, the impact of the enslavement was kind of trivialized in a way because it was like, oh, they're, but they're, make, they're doing it for me. I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think the memes you often sent me are funny, but there are memes out there that propagate like neo-Nazism and they propagate. I know, but this right, book specifically Pepe. was like, they make cat memes and dog memes yes. all day, which was cute and funny, but it kind of just like, I don't, which is so, I, I hate that about myself. I hate that sometimes I'm such an adult that my imagination is just like stifled. But I felt the, the same way at first in um, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Um, again, if you haven't seen it, just like, you know, go check it out. But there are some scenes where it's like, okay, this is so outrageous and absurd that like I'm, I'm, I'm taken out of it now. Like, uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm almost like too adult for the, it which is stupid i'm so not the too fight scene it. with the dildos sort of uh, yeah you're kind of just like <laughs> all right you well out. i i'm not trying to the sit here fingers. and watch people yeah fight with big giant penises like it's funny but like i'm not gonna take time to do this i'm gonna go finish white lotus season <laughs> two you know so there were a couple you times take life too seriously amber i know but i just like I, I really enjoyed the story. I do want to start with that. But something about memes as currency sort of took me out of the story at some point. So I was like, oh, my God. All right, like, let's let's talk about this whole it. intergalactic war is about cat let's, memes. Let's, like, who cares? <laughs> you know, well, we'll we'll come back to that currency and it's okay. important, important part of the plot. But something a little bit more serious is something that I love to talk about is the Ken Topley. So in this far sector of the universe, there are three civilizations. You have like the AT-AT, which are sentient AI, and they refer to biological people as meat salads, which I thought was funny. Yes, that's cute. So I'm like, Amber's my favorite meat salad. Oh. Uh, and then there's the Ketopli, <laughs> which are this plant-based sentient group of people, and they have a compulsion to like eat other biologicals, uh, which is sort of an honor. And We're respect. biologicals, right? Yeah, yeah, biologicals are like people with with flesh, so they like to eat people. They're carnivorous plants. Yep. But they're sentient, and they've learned to control that. But it made me think of mortuary cannibalism, which is the practice of eating your um, beloved dead ones. Oh! Like, yeah. Uh, the, I know. The Wari is an indigenous tribe in Brazil. and Well, they, now I'm an asshole. Yes, Keep and they, they actually do this, um, or did before they were completely colonized. Um, and it's sort of the utmost respect to, like, eat your diseased ones as like mm. the fruiter. But what, okay, now the diseased part is sending me. So why, why would I? Deceased. 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 Not diseased. Got deceased. it. Deceased. Okay. Well, that it's still sending deceased. me. So as a way to honor and revere. Yeah, and I hate to, like, I hate to sound like a stupid American, but I don't want to eat any human I'm sort flesh. of offended you won't eat me with, like, you wouldn't even just eat a little bit of my ashes? No. Just taste a little. Like, I want to be burned. Can you just, just a finger full? Or just oh. make, make, use a little bit of my ashes. If I die before you, make a little, <laughs> take my and ashes. And I'm pretty open-minded. And make that into a tea. <laughs> that reminds me of, like, um, remember when we watched Due Date when I was so pregnant? And I was just yeah. like, I need to see movies where people had the baby in the end because I'm what? so miserable. But remember he, like, drank his father's uh, ashes? Like, they were put in the coffee mix because oh, he had them in a coffee can I mean, that was funny, though. You yeah. Know, funny. I mean, this is a sign of like respect, but also. All right. So we look at this funeral tradition and we're like sort of absurd or the Kentopoli. We're like, wait, what? It's an honor for people to eat that person. And at one person <laughs> at Sorry. one point, 
uh, Joe interacts with one of the leaders of the Katopli, and he's like, you smell delicious. And, and her you friend, who delicious. is part of another group of people called the Na, they're like these winged fairy type of people. She's like, oh, that's a sign of great respect. He respects you. And it's made for last, but at the same time, I'm like, no, there's an actual you know, human tradition to people eating the people that they love. And I think we sort of like cringe. But when I do that, when I read about these traditions, I look at parts of our society. Oh, yeah. Like, what's absurd? (laughs) Like, we're literally taking up plots of land, land where people could build homes on and burying people there. Like that, uh, what sense does that make? Plans that we could till for food, plans yeah. that we could have more housing for, plant um, areas that we could, you know, make like playgrounds so kids can have a safe place to be, or play, you know, like more grocery stores, or you could do things with this land, but we're filling it with fucking dead people. That's absurd. All right, you want to talk about absurdity? I mean, I guess when you break it down like that, uh, it's easy. It's more environmentally friendly to eat. Your dead. Now instead we of don't have to eat them. them. We cremations I'm are just, on the table. I'm, I'm saying we're, come, we're the American. You lost me at eating. We but have I, an American I, I tradition. That, yeah. We have an American tradition of burying people and land I'm that could be unique used to America. Uh, the, well, I'm just saying the U.S. You know, where you know we have this European tradition of burying people in like full ass clothes. Yeah, like, that's what? interesting. Or in some t- and, and in some cases, burying me and- naked chains or and uh well because the burial is for the family yeah it's for, but it's i never thought about that ben i and this is what yeah good science fiction sort of does but in this case i'm thinking of a very real um group of people the the worry tribe uh this is yeah thank you for pushing my thinking on I, that because i've never considered the amount of like clothes that could be going to people that don't have clothes or the amount of just like or just more material. Or just how used. expensive funerals are in general. Stupid. Like I like some people can't even afford to bury their loved ones at all. Like that's insane. And it's yeah. yeah. So talking about um Can I tell you one of my favorite parts of the book? Y- yeah, actually go for it. Yeah. We'll do that. Uh, I know, I'm sorry that wasn't I, I meant to tell you, but so at one point she she has Joe. Joe Who's the human, AKA the Green Lantern? The human Green Lantern. Yeah, yes. she's bad bitch. I think she's uh, bisexual in the book as well. It doesn't she doesn't like come out, but you see her hooking up with like women and men. So she hooks up with this one guy, alien, women alien, and men. alien women and men. So she hooks up with this one guy who's like a member of the council, and he nah the council who sort of leads the the city of the enduring. There's like four people on the council, and they. Or three people. I think there's three people. And they represent each of the groups. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, there's three um, yeah. species. The and sentient AI, the sentient plants, and then the sentient like fairies that sort of are more like us. Correct. And he's this beautiful guy like with like really beautiful locks. Like I'll try to find a picture of him. But at one point... Aliens she, coded as black. Wow. Look at yes, that. Yes. At one point, she sleeps with him. And like at first, she... Well, and he's not, like I said, he's not human or he's not a biological or a meat he, salad he is, or he whatever. He is a biological. Oh, well, why would they refer to him as an alien? Because aliens can be um, biological as well. Oh, I thought biologicals were aliens. Sorry. I mean, we're humans only. No, no, no. Okay. Well, he's not human. They can totally. What does biological mean then? Just like fit, like flesh, like substance. So, oh, so the versus plants, like robots and computers. Yeah, yeah. So I'm the, sorry. The AI. I is, didn't understand the, that reading. The it. AI sort of refer to the Katopli, which are the carnivorous plant people, and the Na, which are the fairy people, as biologicals or meat salads. Okay, thank you for clearing that up. Anyway, my point is that one of her somebody's in her ear trying to make sure she's like staying focused on the mission and she says well, the, the joke isn't even that funny now that we had to like put all these ramifications on it but at one point like the person in her ear is like oh my god did, like i know you hooked up with that guy or whatever and she's just like i'm just saying you can't trust him and she says you think my judgment has been impaired by alien peen I just I, I never read in a book like <laughs> alien Bitch, peen i'm not going to let this alien peen is like run me off my game so there were some even though i'm like the cat memes or whatever i feel like meh about for for all the times i felt meh about that i really appreciated the comedic beats of joe as a narrator 
Um, like you could really see some of the comedy coming out as Joe would narrate things. And then just her personality in general, like she always had like some funny like lines here or there. Another thing I really loved about the story is that, you know, every check things, every time we marked a new chapter or something, there were some really fun quotes uh, from, you know, obviously like real black activists. So there was one from Nina Simone in here somewhere. I didn't mark the page, but keep talking. I, I'm just going to be a little bit nerdy in comics. We don't call them chapters. We would refer to them as issues. So this is collective issues. Okay. Well, so, as not chapters issues. as we go from issue to issue, thank you for correcting me. Uh, there are some fun quotes not fun, but like good quotes from real people outside of the comics. And this one was like, I ain't about to be nonviolent, honey, from Nina Simone. Yep. <laughs> so I just, I know that's not meant to be funny. And Nina Simone was clearly a, like a mogul and an activist. But just imagine somebody say like, I ain't about to be nonviolent, honey. Like I literally had a moment as I was like reading this and dealing with the late checks <laughs> in my real life. I just wanted to send my agent an email being like, I ain't about to be nonviolent, honey, okay? That's for MLK. I'm about to get violent with y'all asses. Where is my check, well, bitch? Well, it's the the frozen MLK, the frozen in time MLK, a very specific point in MLK's yeah. life where he was speaking nonviolence. And yet, at the same time, if you read, you know, letters from, Bir you know, letter from Birmingham, Birmingham jail. Uh, he... He very yeah, near the end, he was like, nah, that, goddamn. <laughs> that we cannot, patience is no longer expected. Like, we cannot, yeah. he, he makes it very clear. And I think that quote throws in this, the face yeah. of, like, uh, they black even respect, had a, respectability politics. They even had a really good Richard Nixon quote in here, oddly enough, where Richard Nixon was having a moment where he was essentially saying something along the lines of, like, people rioting and protesting is, like, uh, what, it, oh, a riot is a spontaneous outburst. A war is subject to advanced planning. Okay, never mind. He was wrong. A war is subject to advanced planning. A riot is a spontaneous I don't think a riot is a spontaneous outburst. Maybe I was reading too fast. No, no, no. He's saying... What is he saying? He's saying that... So, um, Nixon is... And I think the context might be like... The war on drugs specifically. Right. Um, oh, no, that was Reagan. Uh, I think he's, yeah, he's talking about the difference between riots and wars. So he's probably yeah. referring to protesters of the Vietnam War. Right. Who were but not rioting. They were making, they were putting a war on the American government. I'm assuming Dixon was a terrible fucking Yeah, he was. That's how I was. Okay. I, I misread this. I don't think a riot is a spontaneous outburst. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's spontaneous. It's just it's boom. Not spontaneous. Yeah, I'll I think a riot is like a direct result to like, oh, it's a, it's an, it's an effect of multiple causes. Right, but it's spont. Like I hate when people like, especially during the George Floyd riots, people are like, well, protests. I should say protests. Um, people are like, well, where is this coming from? Well, this is out of nowhere. It's like what. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Like, I see so, what you're so saying. calling it spontaneous and like. Well, it just pops out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. The, the nature of that is a little strange. But I guess in this context, Nixon was comparing riots to wars. Yes. As two separate entities. Anyway. So Amber I, loves feel, Nixon. Feel, feel, no. Amber feel free, is a huge, feel free to uh, cut this from the pod. My, my takeaway there is that like riots are not spontaneous outbursts to me. Uh, uh, so you, you mentioned. Um, these memes and you mentioned this slavery so essentially we're we're presented with this society that has no emotions but obviously like society Sorry, I gotta meet another oh yeah right, right. obviously societies cannot function without emotions it's, correct and so what they do is there's this drug that um uh, I think it, what, what's the drug called? Switch off. Switch off. Switch, <laughs> Switch off, which turns off the virus. And so what? It lets you have emotions. The, the government sanctions these people to take Switch off and then forces them into these labor camps to like produce memes and currency and art and all this other things that are required to have emotions for. And so it, it made me think of like this 
paradox. I'm going to call it like the don't ask, don't tell societal paradox, okay. which is a reference to the military idea where like officially like you can't be gay in the military, but we're just don't ask, don't tell. Mm. And there's this uh, theme throughout like science fiction where you have the don't ask, don't tell paradox. For example, in The Handmaid's Tale, they're like, drinking is bad, you know, you know, partying is bad. And yet there are these very clear underground places where all the un- mm-hmm. government officials go to to party and drink. Like this is something that's frowned upon that everybody does. Right. So it's like we're going to abolish emotions. And yet we're going to create this other part of society where you can do this here. Right. And Absolutely. So, and I, I think like there's this whole idea of creating tyranny, but then we're not going to be, we're going to tear, we're going to, you know, terrorize these groups of people, but we're going to leave these other groups of people alone. And so I, I love this book because it very much makes this clear connection between like American history and the current day. For example, like, you know, the reason that emotions are rid are gotten rid of is because, um, these three groups of people were fighting with each other, right? Yeah. And they're like, okay, we won't fight each so other. So the solution is let's just take away all y'all's take, emotions, yeah. not actually rid so, the problems. Or, which is yeah. exactly what happened in, yeah. you know, post 9-11. 45 days after 9-11, the Patriot Act is passed, yeah. which makes it easier for people to, like, get our bank red- records, to get our emails, just any civilian. Yeah. Right? Or And then, and then you have another two years ago, the Muslim, um, because I mean, it feels very like the don't say gay act. It's like, okay. So the, like, do you think just not saying this will just completely erase that these people exist? Like what, like what's the end game with well, this bullshit? Well, yeah. I think it's this idea of like presenting. Well, I think there's like two, two issues here. It's like one where you're, well, okay. So the first thing is like, um, with don't say, like, don't ask, don't tell. Right. Is that there's the official stance and then there's the, and then the unofficial, like, looking away. Because you can't, yeah. because ultimately ter- you can't tyrannize people from being themselves. So you have to create, you c- full, complete tyranny. Got it. Is not sustainable. Right. Like you have to provide some sort of leeway, some. But there's a level of like, please just don't be your full self over here. Like be your full self over there. That is still very fucked up. Right. And but then people. But then there's this element where like uh, societies or governments feel that they need to be tyrannical because Mm -hmm. if they're not, you know, something terrible is going to happen. Right. And usually it which leads to something terrible happening. Right. So like don't ask, don't tell is like, okay, we're going to make you know, being gay in the military illegal officially, because if we made it legal, then everyone will just fuck each other. Like maybe Even that's, though that's happening. Yeah. But let's, you, let's say we may, didn't, but we didn't sanction it. Yeah, maybe yeah. it's not, it's not happening, but it, so, but I want to come back to this other idea where like people are just completely, when you're terrified and you do things out of terror, it becomes tyrannical. And we see this, we saw this with the Patriot Act, right? But in some ways, tyranny provides stability. And we see this in Iraq where Saddam Hussein was a tyrannical leader, but Iraq was stable. And, you know, um, so it becomes this like weird balance so that, which I think far sector is trying to explore. Like, not I don't having think tyranny a- is ever good. Let me, let me just... <laughs> Like, you can have, like, state sanctions on some things and not others, but, like, just straight up, like, everybody is going to not feel emotions tonight is, like, well, that's not going to work. Like, we're, we're a diverse yeah. nation of people. Like, it, it also it, nothing works where it's, like, everybody's going to do this thing, I, I believe. But, also, um, it's just not possible. And, it, and it's not, like, somebody's going to just want to, I don't know. Like, obviously, there have to be, like, some rules and some structures, but. <laughs> well, yeah, the city of the Enduring couldn't be successful without people on switch off. Like it needed these farms, these essentially she calls them sweatshops of people taking switch off to use their emotions to make the society run. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Sci-Fi Side podcast. Up next, we will be reading A Taste of Honey by Kai Ashanti Wilson. Again, that's A Taste of Honey. It is a 2016 LGBT fantasy romantic novella. So be sure to read A Taste of Honey, and we will see y'all next week for the show. Bye, y'all.